video we will introduce a concept called DNA taxonomy so how this DNA taxonomy is differing from DNA barcoding also introduced in this topic is barcode gap analysis and how to delineate the species based upon barcode gap analysis so what is molecular systematics as the name says it is molecular so it's a systematics based upon molecular evidences so usually by and large it is DNA sequence right but it's not always uh, be the DNA you can also use the, the protein sequences as well the amino acid sequences as well so morphology based phylogenies do not come under the reams of molecular systematics though you can use morphology to augment your evidences based upon molecular data right so amino acid sequences can also be used so older techniques like RFLP, AFLP, RAPD, STR, microsatellite etc can also comes under the molecular systematics because ultimately these are all molecules right however the current gold standard of molecular systematics is sequence based approach where you work with DNA sequence data so barcode or molecular marker or locus is nothing but short sketch of DNA sequence that is employed in sequence based molecular systematics so the, these two terms DNA barcoding and DNA taxonomy might look similar but there is differences so barcoding refers species delineation and diagnosis so you know so diagnosis means identification of an existing species uh, for example you comes across a kind of a plant unknown to you but that is not a new species you see it has already been described by somebody else in the world so you never know that who dis described it so you want to identify that plant species so that is called diagnosis it's like disease diagnosis you know already known uh, disease like cholera so if you suffer from which is, is your disease is cholera or not you can get it diagnosed in a usual lab right uh, in the private lab or uh, government hospital but if the disease is altogether new then you need a lot of expertise to say that the, the disease is new for example novel coronavirus or COVID-19 so that is something like DNA taxonomy so DNA taxonomy means taxonomic revisions or for example moving species from one genus to another or moving families from one order to another order all this comes under the reams of the DNA taxonomy or describing a new taxon for example a new species or a new genus species delimitation based on the DNA sequence data so species delimitation means okay of the pool of this uh, DNA sequences this much belongs to species A another one belongs to species B like that so species discovery that is what you known as species discovery right you are describing altogether a new species that is unknown to the world of science before so that is DNA taxonomy but DNA barcoding the term barcoding refers uh, to diagnosing the species the pre-existing species right so it's not really a species discovery so there is an approach called tortoise and hare so what is this tortoise and hare approach so it concerned with which locus to choose for your uh, studies right molecular systematic studies slow evolving locus like conserved regions for example genes are really good for higher taxonomic levels for example class or order level while fast evolving let's say like intergenic sequence IGS or introns like ITS these are good for you know uh, within species or species level taxonomy you know good for lower taxonomic level so it is basically uh, you know inverse relationship between uh, the fast how fast the sequence is evolving and which taxonomic level so it all depends upon what kind of study that you are performing so there are several important loci used for molecular systematics for example ITS 1 5.8 s to ITS 2 region is used for all eukaryotes so as 16 s as well as 18 s 16 s is used only for the prokaryotes of course you know and all these are nuclear chromosomes right now RBCL is a gene so as trn lf intergenic spacer used for the plants and both of these are of the chloroplast genome cytochrome uh, b is a gene that is used often for the eukaryotes and this is coded in the maxi circle or of the mitochondrial dna now cox gene or co 2 nd1 that is cytochrome c oxidase subunit 2 nadh dehydrogenase subunit 1 spacer is used for animal barcoding 
and that is also coded in the maxi circle of the mitochondrial DNA molecule. So these are different kinds of markers used oftentimes in algae and uh, diatoms and dinoflagellates as you can see for the green algae it is tough A and RBCL. So uh, these columns represent genomes, plastid genome, mitochondrial genome or nuclear genome while these are nothing but algal groups. It all depends upon which group you are interested to study. For example, if you are working with diatoms and you know if you want a mitochondrial genome then COX-1 for mitochondria COX-1 is really common for all these groups right and for diatom if you are interested to work with the plastid gene then this RBCL is a good option. So all, the, all this depends upon your target uh, organism or target taxonomic hierarchy and then you can choose appropriately right. Uh, as you can see that uh, you know some of these regions like euglenophyte this region is most oftenly used not the PSA or RBCL. So simply going with RBCL as RBCL has been used for chrysophytes I will also use it for euglenophyte is not a good option. You will have to see that which of the sequence are commonly used for uh, you know the target taxonomic level. As I just said, selection of loci is extremely important. One of the very important thing is that which is the most oftenly used, you know, the barcode in the selected uh, taxonomic level. Also important as I just explained is that uh, the, the tortoise and hare method. So fast evolving is good for lower in level, hierarchy level, for example, within species, population level, while slower in evolving uh, slower speed of evolved evolution like genes are really good for higher taxonomic level. Another important thing is about uh, the barcode coverage in GenBank. So ITS1 or TRNL which one has got maximum coverage of that species in the GenBank. So that coverage is extremely important. So ideally there would be hundreds of other accessions to which our query sequence should compare to. So if the database do not have enough sequences then there is no point in amplifying that region isn't it. It is quite comparable with the uh, uh, situation in the forensic science, medical forensics and diagnostic. So if you amplify a gene, for example, uh, the gene coding for superoxide dismutase, because it is kind of uh, uh, sounds nice for you, but there are no sequence available in the gen bank for this gene in the taxonomic hierarchy that you work with, virtually our sequencing efforts would be futile, isn't it? So an analogy is the DNA fingerprinting in the forensics. So suppose forensics experts find that biological sample of a rapist at the scene and they extract the DNA and amplify the barcodes. Then now what will you do? Unfortunately in India we don't have any repository or database of the DNA barcodes of the non-criminals. We can only blast it against the Japanese or European or American database which is virtually of no use because uh, you know uh, how, how can you think that an American or a Japanese coming to rape our citizen here. So if you see that in the criminals in the extremely unlikely scenario right. So you need to have enough in your database otherwise there is no point in doing this uh, DNA sequencing itself. So if there are suspects in the case then of course we can cross match the DNA fingerprints isn't it. So species delimitation refers to defining the species boundaries from the DNA data. So which forms, which cluster forms one species is what you call the DNA limitation. Suppose you have generated hundreds of sequences at a particular locus. In the phylogenetic tree, these sequences form four well demarcated clades. Now the question is, does this clade correspond to the four species or not? So if all of our sequences come from one species, and DNA species delimitation unanimously conclude the existence of four species inside the a priori one species. Then that phenomenon is something called cryptic speciation which has been well described in many of the species families. One good example could be a giraffe. The system in the giraffe is quite similar in the species delimitation. Here earlier thought to be just one species but new evidences are clearly says that there are at least six species of giraffe as you can see that it has been uh, geographically distributed as well. So species 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 species are there. So all these species form its own monophyletic groups in DNA based phylogenetic tree. So phylogeny based species delimitation concept is a lot more robust than the biological species concept. So phylogeny of panmictic population sometimes form multiple clade. What does that mean? Panmictic. Panmictic means a homogeneous population. They are free to breed 
or free to mate the reproduce right there is no reproductive barrier still if you form a, a you know the phylogenetic tree still it, you can see the multiple clades inside the panmictic population so the reason is that the reproductive isolation precedes the monophyly or phylogenetic species concept during the speciation so the first thing that forms is the reproductive isolation then finally this forms monophyletic group so if you see that the groups are monophyletic that is a very good proof that these have already been re reproductively isolated and these are the real species you see it's not really some artificial concept so as you can see here this one is uh, how the species split happens right one ancestral species split into two daughter species so it's nothing but speciation event that happens through the time so as you can see the first is going to be uh, different allele frequencies is going to form then morphologically distinct species then comes different habitat or habitat adaptation then comes reproductive isolation then monophyletic dna so monophyletic dna needs uh, you know a lot more evidences so it is a lot more robust right so all these evidences are used for appropriate um, you know respective species concept for example different allele frequencies used for a genotypic cluster concept while morphologically distinct criterion is used for morphological species concept and so on we have several species delimitation concepts for example there are different methods like abgd spider statistical parsimony gmyc or bayesian gmyc species delimitation omera method or distem bpp all these methods you can use it so these are depends upon what kind of data that you have single locus that means only one gene or one sequence or if you're working with multi locus then you can use these methods so abgd is really a simple method so it it is abgd stands for automatic barcode gap discovery so it's basically a distance based method that automates the detection of the barcoding gaps so basically it calculate uh, within species diversity and between species diversity so if the between species diversity is far higher than within species diversity based upon the statistical test like t-test then it can call it as a species right so that is how the delimitation works barcoding gap the term refers to a gap observable in the frequency distribution of intraspecific and interspecific genetic distances a corresponding distance threshold may be used to delimit the species like in the ABGD method. They have to calculate the within group distance of each group that forms a clade in the tree. Now second step is to calculate the distance between the pair of such group that is between groups. Now the question is are between group distances significantly greater than the within the group distance. So if the difference is significant then you can call it as a, a significant barcode gap that means that these clade do correspond to species in question so that is how the abgd works remember that evolutionary forces that decrease the variation within the population and increase the variation between the population favors the speciation right so we the for the speciation to happen within species diversity has to be very low but between species diversity has to be very high that is exactly how the abgd method of barcode gap analysis works so groups can be defined both within the group and between the group distances so it can be of course can be calculated inside the mega the freeware and you can do that manually as well you know abgd method so in summary molecular systematics employs molecular data for phylogeny based taxonomy dna taxonomy employs dna data especially dna sequence data from the sequences of a particular gene or that is nothing but marker or locus gene tree can be constructed and finally statistical species delimitation like abgd method can be used to test whether the clade construes separate species so by far phylogeny construction like phylogenetic inference remains a central dogma of molecular systematics